from Free Minds TV in Keene, New Hampshire, a uh, cable broadcast show. I was wondering if you would answer a couple of questions for our audience. Okay. All right, Keene's one of the more liberal pockets of New Hampshire, so we were just wondering, what would you say that some of your policies are that would appeal to more of the, maybe the liberal persuasion? Well, you know, I don't, I don't appeal to certain groups. I appeal to individuals, and, uh, but that means a broad spectrum. Everybody's an individual, so those who call themselves liberals tend to like the message. I talk about individual freedom and personal liberty and personal choices. At the same time, uh, they're very interested in foreign policy, and uh, they're very annoyed with uh, the current foreign policy, and I'm very annoyed with this current foreign policy, so we uh, tend to be allies on that issue. What do you think that you would change in foreign policy for people who haven't heard your message before? What would you change for our, in our foreign policy? Well, I would uh, remind them about uh, what the founders told us and what the Constitution said. And we're not to be the policeman in the world. We can't afford it. It gets us into trouble. It costs us too much money. It annoys the rest of the world. We build up enemies. We lose our allies. So we should change it. We should be a non-interventionist foreign policy, and we should come home and mind our own business. Excellent. Now, just another off-topic, uh, why do you oppose uh, personal income tax? Well, it's the most serious attack on personal liberty because that means the government owns all your income and they'll allow you to keep a certain percent. Mm -hmm. So the principle's wrong, and if they have a challenge with the amount of taxes you're paying, you're guilty until proven innocent. That's very un-American. Mm -hmm. Besides, the size of government we have is un-American, and the foreign policy we have is un-American. So if we didn't do a lot of those things, we wouldn't need that tax. We didn't use it for most of our history, so I, I think it's the very worst kind of tax to have. Speaking of the size of the federal government, um, how important do you think the Tenth Amendment is and how would you implement it, um, how would your implementation of it be different from the current administration? Well, I would never enforce the laws that uh, are unconstitutional, that it's the state's responsibility on uh, certain medical procedures and medical choices, I would allow the states to determine that. The state law should prevail, not the federal government. Right. Are the DEA raids on mar medical marijuana clinics important to continue or should we stop them? No, we should stop them because they're unconstitutional in the state. You're not being compassionate by taking uh, medical marijuana from somebody who's suffering from cancer or AIDS. And uh, people should have freedom of choice. And we certainly should respect the law, and the law says the states should be able to determine this. Speaking of the war on drugs, do you see the comparison between alcohol prohibition and the war, the war on our current war on drugs? It's exactly the same. Prohibition doesn't work. Prohibition causes crime. And we treat alcoholism now as a medical problem, and I, as a physician, think we should drink, treat a drug addiction as a medical problem, not as a crime. But when people commit violence, whether they're under the influence of drugs, uh, prescription drugs, illegal drugs, or alcohol, they should be punished severely, and people should know about it. But, but uh, we shouldn't be putting people in prison for life with no chance of, of uh, getting out of prison and never had committed a violent crime. At the same time, we hear cases where murderers and rapists get out after five or ten years or never even go to prison. It doesn't make any sense. So the, the whole war on drugs is just about as disastrous as the war in Iraq. All right. Um, and one last question here. There's a lot of grassroots support that you've gotten. Why do you think that you've gotten so much grassroots support and support from a lot of volunteers that aren't being paid to be on your campaign, but they're coming out anyways to support you? Why do you where do you think that stems from? I think I think they love freedom. <laughs> I think uh, the, the message of the Constitution, the message of freedom, is that we're very non-intimidating. Uh, we're not telling people how they should run their lives. We're very tolerant of what they do. And uh, we apply those same rules to the economy, and that means they get to keep the money they earn, and uh, they, will, they see they were going to be more prosperous, they can lead their own life, and that we as a country could save a lot of money just by changing our foreign policy and therefore we could take care of some of the needs here that we need to take care of. I, I, I can't understand why we uh, as taxpayers allow our government to spend money bombing the infrastructure of a country, a third world country, and then paying to rebuild it at the same time our bridges are falling down. It makes no sense whatsoever. All right, well thank you so much right. for taking the time. Thank, I really appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. What are we going to do about the monetary issues that we're facing as a country running a triple de um, deficit, both in trade, our national deficit, and our savings as Americans? What are we going to do if um, 
we get someone else in office besides you who isn't promoting you know, the monetary policy that you're that you're promoting. You, you're going to usher in an economic and uh, financial disaster, and we're on the verge of it. This last week, uh, the world, in order to hold this uh, artificial monetary system together, they created 300 billion dollars out of thin air. And it's just, it's just, just paste. They're just trying to paste a, a big hole in a big bubble. And uh, what you're asking is the, is the consequence of a runaway welfare system, runaway spending, and a runaway foreign policy. And, and we have no other ways of financing it because our country literally is going broke and our, we aren't as productive. So if we don't deal with that, we're going to have a mess because at the rate we're going, it will lead to the destruction of the dollar. And that is chaotic. Matter of fact, the dollar is being undermined right now. That's why if anybody happens to be in the middle class, they all of a sudden don't feel as good as the government tells them they're supposed to feel. Oh, yeah, everything is wonderful. No inflation. You know, buy a house. You know, nothing will happen. Have a house. Everybody's a hustle. And then all, all of a sudden we see they're not, it's not for real. So, but the monetary issue is key because, in fact, it was the first issue that I dealt with the very first time I ran, right. and I've talked about it ever since, and I bet it's a long time since anybody in this country heard a presidential candidate talk about the monetary issue, and yeah, there's a lot of people around this country, either they have heard about it or they're anxious to find out about it because it explains so much have the humble foreign policy that we were promised. So quite frankly, I think the traditional Republican and traditional American, the constitutional uh, foreign policy and the foreign policy of the founders, that of minding our own business is a great policy and we ought to change it. This campaign espouses the principles of individual liberty, but liberty is not two pieces. It's not personal liberty and economic liberty. Liberty is one thing. Your right to your life and your right to the fruits of your labor, it's all one, and we need to put it back together again. But it's held together, it's held together by the Constitution. The Constitution is, is what brings us together. It's welfareism and socialism that divides us because everybody's clawing at the remaining portion of the pie that is in Washington because they take from us and they take it to Washington and they waste it. And yet today, the country is divisive and yet freedom and the Constitution brings diverse groups together because we want to leave people alone. Let them have their own lives. Don't tell people what to do. As long as they don't hurt people, they ought to have a right to their own lives. But we need to reassess our values on the monetary system because there is no authority in the Constitution for a central bank. There is no moral authority to allow a secretive central bank create money out of thin air because it leads to nothing but trouble. Yeah. The system of money that uh, allows the Federal Reserve to create money for the benefit of the Congress that spends too much is something that is very, very destructive and that's why governments get so big. But when you do that, you devalue the currency, you devalue the, the, the value of the money, goes down, prices go up, and people get hurt, and the people that get hurt first are the middle class and the poor, and they suffer from this. At the same time, much wealth is transferred to the wealthy class. The idea of money has to be addressed because it represents the growth of big government, it, it represents monetary interference and these bubbles at burst. And this past week, it required around the world to contain the markets over 300 billions of dollars injected into the system to maintain this bubble, which is not maintainable. And uh, this, this can't last, and therefore, what do we do about this terrible problem? return to the Constitution. The Constitution still says that only gold and silver can be legal tender, and the Constitution said you cannot emit bills of credit, which is paper money. So all, we, all the problems we see, whether they're social problems and personal choices and state rights problems, the problems are, are large, but the solutions are not difficult. And I am convinced that even in the midst of a financial crisis, a lot of people's standard of living will go down and a lot of wealth be lost, will be lost. 
But there's one thing that has to be preserved and we won't have to worry about tomorrow. And that is our freedom, our freedom to go to work and have a sound currency and get the government off our backs and out of our pockets. And we'll be okay. <laughs> Very, very quickly, very quickly, because I understand I have a limited amount of time, I want to just say something about national sovereignty. To start off with, I'm the individual that has introduced in every Congress the bill that says we should get out of the United Nations. And therefore, therefore it follows that we shouldn't be in uh, the WTO, the IMF, the World Bank, CAFTA, or NAFTA, and we... And we certainly, we certainly should reject the idea of a North American Union, and if I were to be your president, I will not allow that to happen. Yeah. Frankly, I have joined your revolution, and I am proud to be part of what you want to do. Thank you very much. If you would like to help out the show, we would really appreciate it. Simply log on to freemindstv.com and click contribute. From there, you can choose between giving a one-time donation using Chippin or by becoming a monthly subscriber for $3, 5 10 or $25 a month. Simply click on the PayPal logo of the amount you want to contribute and from there, you will be taken through the steps with PayPal. If you can't afford to help us financially, you can still help us by going to vote.freemindstv.com and casting a vote for our audio podcast on Podcast Alley. Thank you for your continued support.